Uh, we have seven uh, presentations. Uh, you know, the time schedule is 15 minutes each, including questions. So please uh, be aware of that. And between 12 and 13 minutes, uh, I will tell you when you are three minutes to the end. Okay, so uh, I would like to invite the first uh, presentation uh, an oval merging algorithm for connected vehicles using uh, NetLogo. Is it you? Okay, yes, from. Uh, okay. Perfect. No, oh, no, it's this one. This one, this one, this one. I come from the Inter Institute of Technology located in Warsaw in Poland. I, I am manager of electromagnetic compatibility, uh, electromagnetic compatibility laboratory and my area of interest is PMC. I am going to present you the, my paper, my presentation, the title is background by these surveillance levels conducted over low voltage power lines. The agenda is presented here. I present uh, I'll tell some words about the measurement system of conducted uh, disturbances and power lines. I present the measurement results in urban and rural areas. And tell some words about conclusions. Uh, yes, I have thought about what I'm going to tell you today. Measurement system. In order to measure the conducted <coughs> disturbance levels, environment disturbance levels, on the power lines, we, ha we need the measurement systems. Uh, we have uh, mm, here presented the block diagram of measurement system designed to measure conducted background disturbance level in the frequency band from 150 kilohertz to 50 megahertz. This system consists of the artificial mass network, which is connected to the power lines, three phase uh, power lines, and Using this system, we measured uh, uh, conducted disturbance levels and phase one, two, three, and uh, and and no and 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 the neutral line too. Uh, so artificial mice network uh, is used for measure it. The output of the artificial mice network is connected to measurement receiver. Uh, in order to uh, optimize the system, we have used uh, PC computers. On the deck of these computers is running the EMC32 software. Uh, anybody who work in EMC laboratories knows this system, I suppose, which comes from Roger Schwarz company. Uh, this system rem is uh, remotely controls this receiver and the artificial mesh network via the USB port in order to convert USB port to GPIB, we need the converter USB GPIB. In order to um, uh, not uh, generate the disturbances to, me to, to measure it, uh, power line, we need to line supply filter. We have <coughs> used this type. Um, so this measurement system. This is a picture of the measurement system, this computer with the uh, software comp measurement control system, uh, EMC receiver, uh, artificial means network, and the filter, power supply filter. Uh, <coughs> we have used the uh, Roden Schwarz uh, measurement receiver, SB26. He's working the frequency band from 90 kilohertz to 22 kilohertz. I have measured the disturbance level the, uh, using the RBV resolution band filter, which uh, equals 9 kilohertz. Uh, I have used this artificial mist networks and V260. This artificial mist network is working is this frequency band with. Mm. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. uh, I have used this power supply filter personal computer and this remote control uh, uh, interface adapter. 
Uh, the measurement system designed to measure conductive button disturbance levels in low voltage power lines is built from components typical for conductive disturbance measurement system, which was defined in the standard 55022, the standard for the EMC for inter information technology equipment. The document, this document contains a description of procedures for measuring conducted disturbance levels generated by information technology equipment on a power port. port. Basic um, components of the system include artificial means network and the test receiver, uh, which is connected to measure artificial means network measurement output with coaxial cable. The design of the design of the conducted backbone disturbance level measurement system for low voltage power lines presented in my article is similar to the design of the conductor disturbance measurement system as defined in this standard, but with one key difference, the location of, of low voltage connection to artificial means network. This is because in this my paper the authors are investigated, investigating a low voltage power circuits which is connected to artificial means network input. Whereas in the design described in this paper, this uh, standard, the artificial means network input connected to the power port of the student information technology equipment is connected. So my goal is measure the disturbance at the output of power line instead of the output of the equipment under test. Uh, in order to measure the disturbances, uh, we need uh, correction factors for the artificial means network and correction factors for the coaxial cable which is used to connect the output of the artificial means network to the input of the receiver. Uh, because uh, this equipment we use every day for EMC measurement, this uh, receiver, artificial means network and the RF cable is uh, have such uh, correction fa factors. Uh, here is presented uh, uh, a filter attenuation, which is user, used to isolate the measurement system from the measured uh, power line and circuits. Because uh, when I measure the uh, disturbance level during the night, when the level of disturbance level is very low in the power lines, uh, Sometimes the disturbances generated by the PC computers and the res measurement receiver are bigger than the levels in the power lines. So I have to use uh, very good filters which have uh, attenuation above 100 dB in order to increase the disturbances which were generated by my measurement system. Uh, in my article, I presented the result, results of the measurement. <coughs> uh, here I presented the minimum, minimum, yes, maximum and average level uh, conducted back to disturbance levels in this frequency bandwidth uh, and the power line L1 in urban area. Here I presented the uh, average value uh, on the L1, L2 and 3, L3 and neutral line uh, over 24 hours during the day, during the night. You can see that it is three dimensional uh, 3D picture just represented the level, average level. Uh, I have measured the levels, uh, average uh, levels during different uh, time of the day, of the, of, the, of the day, here presented the average values for it conducted backroom disturbance levels in this frequency bandwidth over these lines, so these average levels during the day from 6 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m., during the morning and during the night. And I have calculated maximum, minimum, average values along with approximation functions for the conducted backdrop disturbance levels measured in the, this frequency bandwidth uh, for this uh, 
power lines and neutral lines over 24 hour period. The previous pictures were uh, presented disturbance level for the uh, 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 urban area. This the same for rural area. So this maximum, uh, mi maximum, minimum, and average level on the L1 circuits. He has presented a 3D picture for the 24 hour period. For its average level for these li lines, free lines, and neutral <coughs> lines. Uh, for different time of the day, evening, and night. And approximation functions. This average value and approximation func functions for average value and approximation function for maximum value and minimum value. Of course, all for, for the uh, rural area. Um, the conclusion from the measurement results. The collected measurement results of average values of the conducted button distance levels measured in this frequency bandwidth and on all low voltage power lines and neutral lines for urban and rural <coughs> areas allow for the following conclusions. The results exhibit a significant variance of 20 dB is dis in disturbance levels between the minimum and maximum disturbance levels. The highest level of, dis of disturbance conducted in the power line circuit was measured in the frequency from bandwidth from 150 kHz to 20 MHz, the highest level. Uh, the level of conducted disturbance in the power line circuits is much lower in the frequency range from 20 kilohertz to 30 megahertz. From 20 megahertz, sorry, megahertz to 30 megahertz. Conducted environment disturbance level in rural areas are much low lower than this, these measures in urban areas. There is significant variance in conducted environment disturbance level recorded during the day, during the evening, and during the nights. The lowest values were recorded during the evening and during the nights, whereas the highest value were recorded during the day. I have uh, calculated uh, factors for this formula, and this formula uh, describes the approximation function for average levels, uh, maximum values, average values, and maximum values for urban area and rural area. You can see here the line which were taken from the standard. <coughs> this maximal, the, the, the mm, guard line for the conducted disturbance level. And here are the presented my uh, approximation function. It is uh, average value. And maximal value of, of my approximation functions is above this Guard line. So the conclusion is, is this good idea to change the, this line or better attenuate the disturbance levels. <coughs> Conclusions. In order to acquire usable data required to assess spectrum disturbance levels conducted on lower power lines over the summer of 2016, measurements of conducted noise levels were performed in two, two locations. In urban <coughs> area in Poland, Warsaw, in rural area, it is small city, Calvary, and area Warsaw. We have measured disturbance on three power lines and neutral lines. Uh, the presented measurement results, results of conducted back to disturbance levels for <coughs> unsymmetrical propagation mode can be used for updating the limits and lower disturbance levels conducted over low voltage power lines determined by current EMC standards. The measurements of conducted back to disturbance levels for symmetrical propagation mode belong to the future scope of their work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <coughs> Any question from the audience? Yes, please. Thank you for nice presentation. I have uh, some <coughs> more remarks. Are you compare the result of the background noise also with the behavior of the people? Because you can easily describe the, the load of the power network according to the background noise? Mm, yes, the uh, load of the power lines 
have big influence in the level of disturbance level because the impedance of the power line circuits depends on the amount of the loads. Mm. But I have measured the disturbance levels for 24 hours. And in my opinion, if I average the value in this period of time, it has a uh, reliable value and very stable yeah, in the time axis. It is similar to the behavior of the yeah, group. I suppose that, uh, of course, it's changing in the time axis. Yeah, yeah. And uh, are you considered uh, a broadband frequency range? Because today's standard are focusing on uh, 100 megahertz and so on. It is a very time consuming process. I have measured for only for 2 kilohertz resolution bandwidth. And you can collate the disturbance level using the field under the curve, which I have measured, because I have measured for 9 kilohertz uh, RBV, uh, resolution bandwidth filter. You can calculate using, uh, um, measure the field for under the, this curve for bigger bandwidth. bandwidth. Yeah. Okay. And, and this uh, urban area, it, it was some new cable, new location, that means that there are underground, overhead, power line, it's, I think it's quite important. Yeah, 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 you are right, but you know, it is very time consuming process, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much again. Thank you. Uh, we will pass now to the second presentation, performance testing and methodology for evaluation of power line communications. Center Peter Mlynek from the Czech Republic. Hello everybody, my name is Petr Mlinek and I'm from Brno Lisgo Technology from Czech Republic and I think I continue in this topic of power line communication in the second presentation. We are focusing on the performance testing and the methodology for evaluation of different kind of power line communication or vendors uh, solutions. Uh, there is no doubt that the future a smart grid network will exploit multiple type of communication. And we can also say that for smart metering issue is the most uh, defined and most widespread subsystem concept of the future smart grids. In this figure we can see the illustration of the smart grid network and for the transport path network and the, for the access path network they are using different technologies. And we can say that for the access path network that means to the communication to the end devices, the power line communication and the radio are the most widespread communication technologies. That for our work focusing on power line communication, which uh, is like wireless, that uh, not new cable are required, the power line infrastructure are already here. But they are uh, very uh, different uh, circumstances and uh, disadvantage. There are uh, different architecture, material evolution, cable type in different utility location on st or, or uh, state. Therefore, our goal was to answer these two questions. It is possible to design repeatable and uh, reproducible methodology for evaluation power line communication and could be the result of measurement in the laboratory environment comparable with the real field testing. Therefore, uh, we are focusing on the broadband power line communication. That means they use uh, <coughs> the frequency band of the megahertz and the second uh, type of communication according to the frequency band is narrow band and they communicate in kilohertz. We focus on broadband communication because they achieve high data rate, but they are a huge problem of the noise, communication range, uh, the influence of repeaters and so on. From the application point of view, there are two contrary requirements. We want to achieve uh, long distances, uh, robustness of communication and so on. And the contrary requirement is a high speed data rate, especially for the broadband power line communication. They are a huge influence of the noise uh, distance on the throughput. That for our methodology focus on general telecommunication parameters are, uh, as the throughput, latency, losses and so on. But we take into account also the circumstances and uh, environment uh, of different uh, power line and so on on this requirement. Like uh, 
maximum communication distances, adaptation of the communication path to the network changes and so on, impact of the broadband and narrowband noise on the throughput and this parameter. And also, for me, the two most important requirements, uh, that is the establishing communication of the power outage. That means that the end devices with power line communication uh, must find the head end, the master modem and so on. And also, the availability of reliability of communication in time for different location. I think it's uh, similar to the previous presentation that we had we had the load of the power network and we have also the availability reliability of power line communication according to the human behavior. There are simple scenarios or te test bed which we consider in laboratory environment which is divided according to the different uh, signal to noise ratio and uh, conclude uh, different noise. Narrowband noise is this one, broadband and the most noisy environment with the communication with two head and master modems in the same <coughs> network. There are some examples of, uh, of uh, TCP and UDP throughput according to uh, some standards level. For example, one test was conducted for UDP throughput and the influence impact of the frame signs on the throughput. In this figure, we can see the influence of different scenario, which is uh, uh, some idle condition, a medium noisy and very noisy condition, and the throughput are significantly decreased. Also, we are conducted and presenting in the paper some influence or impact of different shape of uh, generating UDP data flow, influence of distance on the throughput for UDP or TCP. And if we want to uh, achieve the maximum uh, vendor throughput, 100 meg megabit per second, we must use uh, unreactional UDP data flow with uh, large frame signs. And uh, if we want to achieve maximum TCP throughput, it's quite hard for uh, this power line communication because they are dividing the, the bandwidth for up and downstream, and it's uh, hard to find the maximum level. Also, in the paper, we can compare different standard or vendors uh, modems f f according to our uh, methodology. And we can see that uh, some kind of, it's not necessary which kind, uh, achieve uh, uh, two times, three times higher throughput. But we, co we also must consider the different frequency band which use different standard and vendors and so on. We can see that th th this uh, frequency band is uh, eight times higher but the throughput is only two times higher because on the higher frequencies, they are higher alternation and so on. And also, they are different, the power spectral density, mask and so on. There th is necessary to avoid some frequencies and so on. Also, we have opportunity to deploy this methodology in the real field. We have a medium voltage line scenario with three modems and we have opportunity to measure uh, uh, 400 and 800 meters. In the case of the 800 meters, we consider this modem as a repeater. And as uh, is generally know that uh, every modem in a broadband power line communication reduces the communication to the half. That means that uh, for 800 meters, it is possible to communication because of the repeater, but the communication throughput is very low. And I would like to finish with some conclusion. In the article, we um, focus on different power line communication technologies according to the frequency band. And uh, some uh, result are that it's not possible to judge the, this vendor or communication according to poor performance. It, it must be considered different scenario, different uh, noise, and so on. We can provide a simple follow param a simple parameter which can be followed and uh, repeatable in different locations in different lab to compare uh, different vendors or different technologies. And also we discuss some proposal of the complex methodology, which uh, also co contains some parameters which is necessary to measure for smart meters, power quality monitor and so on, uh, which is necessary to, uh, for example, for post deployment performance tense of some uh, pilot uh, installation of smart meters and so on. Okay, that's all. Thank you for attention. Thank you. Is there any question? Yes. 
I am going to the first presentation. Mm -hmm. It's better to use, in my opinion, the word uh, disturbance instead of noise, because noise, for noise, the source is temperature, natural uh, phenomena uh, in power supply lines. Mm -hmm. I suppose, in my opinion, better word is disturbances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this Th that's true, but we, we want to achieve economical and time affordable comparison. That's, I think it's the first stage of some measurement and evaluation. After that, it will be better to provide some second measurement, as you said. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyway, we, we distinguish disturbances as noise. So disturbances, and in the case of the power line, you have a disturbance in the case of short circuit, the lag or something, there's disturbance. But the noise is a noise. Noise yeah. is independent, and everything influences the BPL. But it, you, you are considering the low voltage power lines, right? Low voltage and also medium voltage. Medium voltage? Yeah, but there are different types of disturbances what, on. What kind of level of the middle voltage? Uh, 200 uh, and 4 kilo, kilovolts. Uh, over, overline voltage? Overline, yeah. Overhead. Okay. Overhead. Therefore, that's disturbance. We use, we use the name for, for such things, but the noise is a noise. Mm -hmm. So, in your opinion, what sh is better? This I'm to say, we use both. We use both. We use both. We use the noise under the normal work, and then the noise or disturbance, there's noise under the, the disturbances, different disturbances. Therefore, that's, but however, that's. Yeah, yeah. So as I'm not very familiar with this uh, field, but uh, as you describe, how do you describe the performance of the of the network in terms of signal to noise ratio? Or yeah, in our case, we describe the um, power line environment according to signal to noise ratio. So that's why I mean, if it is signal to noise ratio, it is noise. Otherwise, you have to do to define disturbance according to this sort of measurement. So I don't know if it is as you do it. I, do you mean, do you measure signal to disturbance ratio or is it signal to noise? No, 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 I, I don't mean the disturbance, but it's so noise. Yeah, 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 that's, that's what I said. That's if you're talking about communications, yeah. maybe the proper term is in signal to noise yeah, ratio. In case yeah. of disturbance, you have to measure throughput, for example. Yeah, yeah that's right. So. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much again. Thank you. So next one, third one is uh, exploiting secure performance of full duplex decode and forward in optimal relays selection networks. Um, presented will be Ying Tuan Do. Uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it will not be him. So it will be not another one. Miroslav Botnak, maybe? No, uh, Lukas Shevchik. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, good morning for everyone. My name is uh, Lukas Ševčík. Uh, I'm uh, here inst instead of uh, my colleague from Vietnam. I, uh, I'm from the uh, Technical University of Ostrava. He, he is in the Czech Republic. Uh, I would like to uh, present a paper exploiting secure performance of full duplex decode and forwarding optional relay selection networks. Uh, this is paper which uh, made uh, from uh, my colleague from uh, Vietnam I'm only a little bit cooperate uh, on this paper, but I, mm, I hope that I give you some mm, maybe interesting information for you about this idea. Uh, my presentation will consist uh, from uh, mm, uh, uh, of five main points. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, mm, give you some introduction in, uh, uh, in presence uh, of illuminated user. Uh, uh, we investigate the secret uh, outgauge probability <coughs> of the optional relay selection uh, networks. Uh, it's uh, uh, we are using uh, we are use uh, decode and forward based uh, full duplex uh, 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 relaying mode. Uh, uh, we uh, evaluate the closed form expression for the allocation of the end uh, to end signal to interface plus noise ratio. Uh, uh, as well as uh, closed form expression for the exact secret outgauge probability of, pro of proposed optional relay selection uh, system. Uh, th this is under relay finding schemes. Uh, yeah, uh, secret outgauge probability we also com uh, compared uh, with orthogonal, orthogonal, not orthogonal, multiple axis uh, schemes. 
Scratch uh, Augit's uh, performance uh, can be uh, influenced by uh, several parameters, uh, for, uh, as uh, for example, number of relays, uh, transmit power, or uh, average uh, uh, residual solving interference enforced on the full to place uh, relays. Uh, the aim uh, of this paper is enhancing the secret uh, performance of full duplex relay network with uh, decoding forward uh, uh, scheme. Uh, now uh, I would like to present our, uh, our, our model. As you can see in figure, you can see one source, one's destination uh, and one's EVS, one uh, EVS dropper. And uh, uh, we, uh, we can use uh, several relays uh, in our schemes. Uh, as, uh, as you can see, source destination and EVS droppers uh, have uh, only one antenna, but relays uh, have uh, two antennas. Uh, 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 for receiving signal and uh, of course for um, uh, transmitting uh, uh, signal. Uh, uh, as you can weigh uh, between a source and relays is um, uh, is S H S R and weigh uh, for example because relay and uh, uh, destination is uh, is S H uh, R D. Uh, no. Uh, we, we use the PS as uh, power of source uh, and uh, similar uh, PR as uh, power of uh, relays. Uh, X S is the uh, uh, signal from the source uh, source point uh, to relays uh, and uh, similar uh, X uh, uh, RI is uh, so the signal from the relay, uh, relay I to the destination at the same time. Uh, as I told before, the, we use orthogonal multiplexes uh, scheme and also not orthogonal mul uh, multiple schemes. Uh, secret average probability in uh, orthogonal mu multiplexes schemes uh, is the probability that the uh, secret rate of the system is less than the predefined target rate. Uh, now, uh, 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 th this is uh, information about not orthogonal multiple uh, schemes where uh, uh, signals, uh, si transmission, uh, tra transmission signals at uh, source point is a uh, composed signal uh, intended to, to do different services. Uh, first one is uh, transmit uh, IoT and second one to, uh, it's video uh, transmissions. Uh, power allocation factors are uh, uh, A1 and uh, A2. Uh, the success of the systems is when uh, A1 plus A2 equals uh, one. Uh, I'd relay the uh, uh, composed the signal is a decode to obtain signal uh, X as uh, one while considering uh, X as uh, two as interference. Uh, uh, now I would like to uh, present some uh, some our some our uh, uh, results. Uh, uh, our results. Uh, of a uh, proposed relay uh, section network is uh, uh, for half duplex uh, and um, mm, full duplex uh, also. Uh, in our work, we assume that interference is uh, at the noise level and the channel gain of each uh, channel. Uh, and now, uh, uh, here you can see uh, influence of uh, power of signals. Uh, uh, at uh, relay nodes, uh, uh, we also change the power of signal at uh, source uh, to uh, 20 and 40 decibels, and uh, we can see that uh, secret outage probability uh, decrease uh, with uh, higher uh, power of si uh, power of signal. Uh, also, it's a uh, compared uh, uh, number of uh, relays uh, when we used uh, one relays and uh, two relays. We can see that. Uh, when we use uh, more relays, uh, results uh, are uh, efficiently. Uh, and uh, here, uh, here we can here we can see influence of uh, power of uh, signals uh, to source uh, point to see uh, to secret gauge probability. Uh, 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 in uh, in this uh, figure, we can uh, see uh, uh, evaluation of uh, orthogonal multiplexes with uh, not orthogonal multiplexes. Uh, as uh, as we can see, uh, an order to multiplex is uh, signal X uh, S1 and X uh, S2 is uh, 
lower when we compare with the uh, orthogonal multiple axis. In this case, uh, we use um, uh, two uh, uh, re relay, and we set uh, power of uh, power of relay to five and uh, fifteen uh, decibels. Uh, the transmit power at the relay uh, at the relay uh, mm, power of relay contribute to change uh, secret August probability performance and height uh, and the cross point it's approximately uh, as we can see the, the, the 25 uh, to from 25 to 30 uh, decibels uh, as I told uh, uh, as, as, as we can uh, see in a, in a figure the more relays are the better uh, secrets performance uh, we can uh, um, we can get uh, a good uh, secret August performance uh, or if uh, we choose uh, power of um, relay and uh, also power of uh, source uh, choose in the right manner uh, then uh, we'll have the mm, better or best outgauge performance uh, now I would like to uh, uh, finish my presentation uh, and uh, I would like to uh, present some uh, conclusion. Uh, we, uh, in, in our paper, we uh, uh, compared the uh, influence of orthogonal multiplexes and not orthogonal multiplexes uh, scenarios under the relay selection scheme. Uh, each uh, full, duplex, uh, full duplex relay receives the information signals from the previous node as well the, as transmits the uh, uh, jamming signal to uh, the EVs dropper and at the same time. Uh, and it's uh, maybe it's everything for, from me. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any question from the audience? No, I have just a uh, couple of uh, curiosities. Uh, uh, I wasn't sure. Uh, do these rela relays? Uh, you said that uh, uh, it behaves better if the number of relays increases. The more relays you have, the better. Yeah. No? But I think that maybe you only try it with two relays maximum. Or no? Yeah, only the only this paper only with uh, two relays. But ma maybe so it maybe will be good when we when we try the uh, more uh, relays okay. in our schemes. Yeah. It's okay, okay, okay. It's okay. a really good idea. Thanks. Okay. And these relays they broadcast information. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Only one if it's dropper. Only one. Okay. Perfect. Maybe this could be extended. It would be interesting to see what happened with more relays and yeah, more it's, yeah. and it's yeah? good idea. Thanks. It's interesting. Anyhow, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Also. Thank you. So we can move on to the fourth presentation, which is SSC reception over Katamu Sadwet fading channels mm -hmm. in the presence of multiple rayleigh interferences. Presenter will be Stefan Panik from Serbia. Thank you, Chairman. Well, uh, this paper deals with uh, wireless communication and uh, channel modeling with wireless communication and uh, simulation of such process. Uh, mainly, you all know with the development of 5G systems, it would be interesting to observe uh, how the uh, quality of the signal at each of your uh, new devices, uh, tablets, iPhones, iPods, and so on and so on. Uh, it can be uh, presented in the function of uh, various uh, parameters of the telecommunication channels. Uh, within uh, 5G systems now, there is also maybe one intention to uh, move the process of uh, combining signals for, from the base station, uh, the, the space diversity receiver, can be moved now from, from the base station uh, directly into your terminal, directly into your uh, smart device. Uh, so uh, th this paper uh, observes very uh, general uh, model of uh, such wireless communication in uh, this, uh, in this uh, it can be said, also uh, 
also results can be uh, these results can be uh, used for, for the millimetric rays for, uh, and centimetric rays uh, for, for, for 5G systems. It is very very general results, and the channel modeling is very general. And uh, in this paper, we have we, we have presented the, the simulation of and mathematical modeling of uh, some performance measures uh, at the reception, like uh, outage probability and uh, bit error rate. And these uh, measures are uh, obtained based on uh, uh, probability density function of the received signal. And uh, uh, received signal is observed uh, as a ratio of the desired signal and uh, sum of multiple interference is because in the future of 5G communications, uh, multiple interference, uh, some other devices could be present uh, near the, the device uh, which uh, need to, to decode the desired signal. So it is also interesting for, from, from this point of view because it uh, considers uh, multiple interference. And also uh, in this model, uh, we have observed the, the influence of shadowing because uh, uh, by uh, because desired signal uh, can be now in this 5G communications uh, shadowed by various objects more often than it was in uh, previous types of communications. So it is very general model. It, it includes shadowing. And also, it, it includes uh, the influence of multiple interference. And based on that uh, model, uh, signal to interference ratio has been made, and probability density function of sub signal to interference ratio <coughs> has been observed. Based on that probability density function, some performance analysis has been made, uh, calculated our uh, outage probability, uh, then uh, average bit error probability based on this expression also capacity could be calculated and then it is observed the the improvement of of these measures improvement of quality of signal in terms of usage uh, the uh, diversity reception uh, and uh, uh, it is observed uh, switch and state diversity reception techniques uh, it is well known from wireless communication uh, technology that uh, switch and state diversity te techniques works in the uh, following manner. You have some uh, level of uh, threshold level of signal, and if uh, uh, desired signal level is smaller than, than this uh, threshold level, then uh, it should be switched to, to, another, uh, to, to another channel. Uh, and then in the next time instant, the uh, level of desired signal in, in this channel is observed, and if it is also below the sun level, it, it goes goes back to, to the first. If, if it is over the, the, the threshold, it, it stays on the on the second channel, and in that way, uh, performances uh, can be improved. Quality of signal can be improved. Uh, so uh, we have observed mathematical uh, mat first mathematical and statistical. Uh, uh, formalization of this model and uh, you know the, the, the nature of physical phenomena and uh, this is very general uh, mo model that, that we have observed it includes both uh, line of sight uh, scenario and uh, non line of sight scenario because by setting some parameters some values to the corresponding parameters uh, the, this model can be reduced to, to both cases. Also, this model can be reduced to, to a model which describes severe shadowing and model which describes less severe shadowing. And uh, all these parameters are re related to the physical conditions of the, the transmissions of the signal uh, that is explained in the paper. Uh, for example, we have a parameter that de describes the the level of the direct component of the signal versus the, the power of the scattered components. Then we have uh, in the paper uh, described how some parameter is written in terms of the severity of the shadowing and uh, so on and so on. And um, here parameter 
me, uh, in standard area of communication, it is parameter describing the, the number of clusters, but here it can be observed as uh, some parameter which is related to the time delay of the of the of the uh, components of desired signal. And as said, we, we were observing uh, SST diversity reception, which can be which will be now uh, used directly at your uh, smart terminals. And this is the, the first model. This is the model of the desired signal, right in the terms of these parameters, uh, which are uh, expressing the, the, the physical nature of the transmission. Also, this is the how the, the interference is uh, modeled. And so, uh, some of this interference is, uh, this is the, this is the, the signal to interference ratio, and then we, we have calculated its probability density function into closed form expression. This uh, expression uh, con converts rapidly, it only needs, uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 uh, members of this sum to, to uh, achieve accuracy on fourth or, or, or fifth significant digit. Then we have cumulative distribution function. And this is how uh, the uh, probability density function at the end of this combining process can be uh, presented mathematically. And it's CDF. And based on this, uh, uh, we can obtain uh, important performance measure like outage probability or average bit error rate for corresponding modulation formats. And we have, we have obtained the, this uh, in the form of uh, number of interferences and uh, some other parameters related to the tran transmission of the signal. And discussion of this uh, uh, graphs is, only, is also presented in the papers. Uh, it is discussed how with the change of parameters uh, are uh, obtained better or, or, or less better results and how some uh, desired level of signal can be obtained in the function of observed parameters and so on and so on and this was the, the main contribution of that paper so if any questions I'd be happy to answer okay thank you very much <laughs> is there any question from the audience Okay, no? Well, I have, uh, well, <laughs> yes. very easy, very easy because also it's lots of information and equations, it's quite, uh, quite uh, complicated, actually, difficult, but uh, if I got it, what you derived was the, how to approximate this Kappa Mu model to a well-known uh, model, like, uh, I don't know, like uh, this usual fading models. But using so you start from Kappa mo mu model and then you derive a more simple and well-known model. Uh, well, well s s sort of we have used very general model sh shadowed Kappa mu model, which mm -hmm. includes also the, the influence on shadowing. Uh -huh, okay. And then w we have uh, um, made uh, the, the model, which also uh, based on this shadow Kappa model includes the, the, the influence of multiple interference. Mm -hmm. uh, we have made the. the uh, model which describes uh, uh, signal to interference ratio where we have one desired signal model by this uh, sh shadowed Kappa mu model mm -hmm. and uh, multiple interference mm -hmm. as uh, instantious uh, random variable as mm -hmm. a random process we have observed this signal to interference ratio as random mm -hmm. process and based mm -hmm. on this uh, random process which depends on the number of interference and uh, the uh, quantity of the shadowing mm -hmm. We, we have then further observed the, the, the possibility <laughs> of improving performances of such uh, mm -hmm. random process by using this uh, switch and state tech, uh, tech diversity technology and reception. Very interesting. Okay, thank you very much. Any question? No? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so then we pass to the fifth. That is a statistical laws and end laws uh, channel models for simulation of next generation 3GPP networks. Present there is 
Uh, we meet us, uh, Alexey Yunus. Alexey Yunus. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm yes, Rinodas Alexey Yunus from uh, Vilnius University, Lithuania. And uh, I will talk about uh, line of sight and uh, non-line of sight uh, channel modeling. Uh, you, you heard from the previous uh, presentation the importance of uh, uh, line of sight conditions for, for uh, some types of networks. And first of all, the motivation uh, for our research uh, stems from uh, currently ongoing work within uh, 3GPP and uh, ITU uh, models. Uh, so, uh, there are several questions uh, which are currently understood in, in both academia, industry and standardization bodies. So, first of them is uh, spatial consistency for uh, channel models. And these channel models for uh, mobile frequencies, uh, so it's uh, from around uh, 1 gigahertz to some uh, 3 gigahertz maybe, and in future it will move to microwaves, uh, to millimeter waves. Uh, so what does it mean, uh, spatial cons uh, consistency is we need to take care of uh, line of sight and non-line of sight conditions to spread these conditions uh, spatially. Uh, the hybrid approach, uh, which is uh, currently very popular, uh, means uh, the combination of map-based uh, prediction models like it was before, for example, HATA models, uh, which models uh, path loss including obstacles, diffractions, plus the stochastic or statistical models, which is uh, uh, currently the basis for 3GPP and ITU. And these stochastic or statistical models is based on cluster scattering. So the clusters are generated more or less randomly, and we have some resolvable paths and some statistical or uh, correlated uh, rays. Uh, all of these uh, models should be three-dimensional uh, uh, to include time-varying conditions. That means uh, base stations and mobiles can be moving uh, over time. It should be wideband models. Uh, it should comply with 3GTP and uh, ITU standards. Uh, here are several uh, main uh, standards or programs, uh, especially which were carried out in Europe, METIS, MIVEBA. So over the last maybe 10 years, uh, they added the following additions to, to such a models. And uh, the most recent ones uh, from last and, and this year uh, considered uh, spatial uh, consist uh, consistency, including uh, line of sight and non line of sight conditions. So, what does it mean, uh, spatial uh, consistency? Is uh, about how we generate uh, that model. Uh, the principle is illustrated from a free GTP standard, uh, which suggests, uh, first of all, uh, generating large-scale parameters of the environment. So that are large-scale parameters. So these are uh, delay spreads, uh, angular spreads, uh, shadow fading, uh, rise chain, K factor. So these parameters are distributed all over the terrain, all over the area. And then based on that uh, statistical information, uh, we generate small scale pa parameters of the uh, clusters. Uh, clusters representing uh, scattering centers. 
And uh, these uh, green blocks are additions uh, from a three-dimensional uh, three model, which is the most recent addition. And at the end of it, uh, we will be able uh, to generate uh, channel coefficients. Uh, that means uh, transfer functions of uh, these uh, 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 wireless uh, channels. Uh, so, uh, we have implemented such a model over the years at our uh, university and uh, our newest uh, uh, work uh, has been uh, to improve uh, the uh, line of sight probability considered uh, currently in these uh, free GPP models. And uh, that line of sight probability is actually the uh, probability that we have uh, line of sight conditions around the base station. And the only variable is the distance. So this is kind of exponential uh, functions. Uh, it could be several modifications, uh, multiple suggestions, but most of them are combination of one or two exponential functions. Uh, graphically, they are uh, very close to plane exponents with some uh, threshold uh, uh, distance in the order of uh, 10, 20 meters, uh, after which the probability gradually uh, decreases. Uh, but uh, there is only one uh, variable, the distance from the station, but uh, how we distribute the uh, line of sight and uh, non-line of sight uh, areas is under the question, under the discussions. And uh, our basic suggestion was to combine uh, two of these functions, two of uh, exponential distribution functions. Uh, one of them representing more dense area, another less dense area. Uh, in, as an example, I could mention, uh, for example, urban areas or uh, building blocks uh, with uh, more dense uh, uh, urbanization. And another area, for example, uh, city squares or streets. So uh, this is typical representation of Manhattan or Madrid grid, which is very regular uh, distribution and uh, usually used by default in free GPP. So our proposal is to combine these two functions, uh, these two probabilities with some uh, very continuous uh, a function in order it uh, shouldn't be stepwise uh, or discontinuous uh, function. Uh, so uh, we did uh, such analysis first with uh, regular grid, uh, Madrid grid, and uh, we did uh, clustering and uh, classification to automatically divide the area into that is shown here by black area as line of sight dominated areas and uh, white areas as uh, uh, non line of sight uh, dominated areas and here is corresponding distribution which uh, accounts for different uh, environments. Uh, after that, we were able to generate uh, line of sight areas which shown in uh, dark green and uh, uh, non line of sight areas, which is uh, in white area. So these are with some correlation distance. Uh, that means if we uh, put a mobile receiver in that location, the receiver should understand that uh, until some distance it will stay in line of sight conditions. Maybe it should uh, use some uh, 
uh, special scheduling, uh, data buffering to account for that. So the uh, correlation distances are usually uh, obtained from measurements. We are uh, publicly available and we used uh, that uh, here. Uh, next we used uh, the data from real buildings. Uh, there are publicly available data for Manhattan City, Chicago uh, cities, so uh, we used also uh, more or less real uh, locations of towers, which is according to OpenFCC uh, database, and uh, here are several typical examples uh, which we got. Uh, first of them is the base station within some open square and uh, this is prediction from real buildings. Uh, next we used uh, classification uh, which is uh, shown by blue line which uh, separates uh, uh, non-line of sight dominated area and line of sight. So the probability of line of sight is shown here, so it is some uh, very irregular shape. Uh, we compared these results with uh, default 3GPP, which is shown here by blue line, and uh, black line is deterministic from uh, real buildings, and our best approximation was the red line, which uh, follows very closely. And we call that uh, dual environment with some bounded region, so we also used some uh, bounded uh, region uh, in the form of uh, harmonic functions, uh, sinus and cosinus, uh, to limit that area close to the base station, to avoid some narrow streets over there. So, uh, with the help of that uh, combination, we achieved our close uh, approximation. Uh, our uh, more typical cases is when base station is uh, on the some a building rooftop and on the left side we have uh, mostly non-line of sight, here line of sight area. So uh, our achievement uh, was uh, better approximation. Again, uh, our model uh, red line and this is uh, uh, black line real buildings. So. Uh, uh, in contrary to default models, we have some lower line of sight probability around the base stations because of uh, some shadows uh, cast uh, by the building, so it uh, better represents true conditions. And if we have very homogeneous distribution of uh, buildings, the model uh, reverts back to the typical to standard uh, free GTP uh, distribution. So we applied that uh, data uh, to multiple cases and uh, we got uh, quite uh, good uh, uh, agreement uh, with uh, the uh, data. So we achieved uh, root mean square error up to 0, 0.0 something uh, for the probability. Uh, we applied this data to time varying uh, mobile scenarios and uh, our uh, main uh, results were also applied to high speed trace scenario which uh, should capture also the uh, Doppler uh, Doppler speed uh, quite correctly and in conclusion uh, we achieved uh, improvement in line of sight and non line of sight probability approximation for hybrid map based channel models and uh, it uh, does not uh, increase very much complexity or uh, calculation complexity, but improves accuracy by combined uh, method.
So thank you for attention and maybe questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Any question from the audience? No? Okay, have just two small questions. Have time because all the presentations were a bit shorter. So just uh, sort of things. First one, I wasn't sure you, you use this dual bounded uh, envelope, yeah. which is sort of correction. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, until now, you know, all the 3GPP and ITU divided environments into, for example, urban and rural. Mm -hmm. That's a different world. Mm -hmm. uh, what we did, we combined together. So, for example, for each city, we may have combined model consisting of urban, uh, micro, urban, or rural, mm -hmm. for example. So it uh, comes closer to real environments, mm -hmm. but still remains statistical, which is a good point because the equipment vendors or uh, regulatory authorities, we don't wish to use very detailed deterministic uh, ray-based, ray tracing based models, but yeah. some statistical. So this is fits mm -hmm. uh, the middle. Maybe. But you, how do you decide whether to use it or not? Because you use it in the first Manhattan model, but not in the other two Manhattan models. Yeah, we used, actually, we used against the uh, real, mm -hmm. uh, real Manhattan city, Chicago city, mm -hmm. and we did uh, parameter approximation or model fitting mm -hmm. to extract these uh, coefficients. Mm -hmm. So in total we had four coefficients. Uh, no, no, but I say, you, you, in the first model of Manhattan, you use dual, uh, this dual bonded uh, mm -hmm. model, but in the other two, you didn't. I mean, how do you decide? Uh, actually, by uh, model fitting. Ah, okay. By so model fitting to, to, the, to this okay, yeah, to okay, that okay, grid. Okay, sorry. Okay, good. And the other question, you talked uh, the last slide, it was about uh, Doppler, Doppler uh, mm -hmm. forms associated to the um, yeah. case of, uh, for example, in train uh, yeah. situations. Yeah. But uh, uh, 5G, just wondering, it's going to be used uh, also as a standard for mobile, I mean, for regular yeah. uh, connection between two mobile, yeah. two devices which are moving. Uh, well, uh, until now, we, what we did is uh, base station is fixed and okay. mobile moving, but okay. in principle it can be done, but uh -huh. the complexity increases uh -huh. yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, because uh, the scattering, uh, we should consider and both ends uh, moving scatterings. Mm -hmm. So f the complexity is quite high. We yeah, haven't yeah. achieved such mm -hmm. performance yet. But you, 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 don't, you still don't have the model? You, you have the model, but you mm -hmm. haven't tried it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Actually, this model is uh, a little bit broader and uh, we used that, we developed that over years mm -hmm. and it's more or less a standard free GPP, but mm -hmm. uh, now we concentrate it on very specific version, line of sight and uh -huh. non-line okay, of sight. Okay. Okay. So basically that uh, question we mm -hmm. made uh, more deep, deep mm -hmm. analysis, but we also applied to the full model and check yeah, yeah, the yeah. consistent surface. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Any you. Any other question? Okay, thank you. <laughs> and then we move on to the last one, uh, which is a study of OSPF, algebraic format modeling using ACP. Presenter Juan, uh, Pedro Juan Roch. This one I, I'm sure I said properly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Pedro Panroy, and this presentation is about the study on OSPF algebraic formal modeling. Uh, first, a short in introduction, then OSPF general behavior, uh, then types of OSPF networks, uh, neighborhood and adjacency, OSPF timers, OSPF algebraic, uh, algebraic model, OSPF verification, and finally some conclusions. Just the layout, just uh, distort it a little bit, but that's it. Well, just to start with, um, this is the classification of dynamic uh, routine protocols. Uh, we're going to uh, study OSPF. OSPF is inside the interior guideway protocols, right? Which means uh, protocols, uh, uh, routine protocols uh, running inside an, in, uh, an autonomous <coughs> system, right? Be being an autonomous system and a network within the same administration, right? Uh, 
And also OSPF is inside a link state routing protocol, meaning that all the routers inside the OSPF domain share the same uh, link state database, right? So uh, OSPF is just a um, hierarchical protocol, meaning that we have a backbone area, meaning uh, area zero, and the rest of the areas are just hanging into area zero, right? And that uh, makes OSPF a um, very nice protocol to uh, scale, scale, right? The escalation of OSPF is very, very, very positive, so um, we can add as many areas as we want to OSPF uh, domain. Then, uh, talking about uh, OSPF packets, we have five types of packets. We have uh, packet number one called hello, and this is for uh, discovering and maintaining neighbors, right? And the rest of the packets are just to uh, LSA exchange, right? So packet number two is called database description. It's uh, thought to exchange in database uh, link state headers. Packet number three is called the link state request, and it's uh, just for requesting uh, database link state updates. Uh, packet number four is called link state update, and is uh, thought for sending database link state updates, LSAs. And uh, packet number five is just link state ACK, uh, ACK so just for acknowledgments. The most important kind of packets is uh, packet number four, right? Uh, link state updates. And inside an LSU, uh, there are many LSAs, right? Link state uh, acknowledgments. The important thing is, what is a link state acknowledgement? It's just that uh, the different kind of networks inside an OSPF domain are just classified into LSAs. LSAs are different kind of uh, LSAs, like router, network, summary. And um, we are just considering the LSAs as a whole, right? So what is the OSPF workflow? Just um, first of all, just the routers uh, into the OSPF domain, just uh, exchange LSA at the uh, link state advertisement, LSAs. Then at a certain point, uh, all the link state database are synchronized, right? And at that point, just each router uh, uh, runs the shortest path uh, first, uh, which is known as the Dijkstra algorithm, right? And um, this algorithm takes each router as its uh, own route and then searches for the shortest path to all the networks inside the OSPF domain. And the best networks are just brought into the routing table, right? So just uh, as a scheme, as a general scheme for OSPF, first of all, uh, there are four tables, right? The first table is the interface table. This, in this uh, interface table is just created at configuration time. Then the neighbor table uh, uh, is just um, um, created when the hello exchange uh, at the hello uh, exchanges. Uh, then the topology table is just created when the LSA exchanges take place. And then the best routes, uh, the best uh, routes to each network are just uh, put into the routing table. And that's why all four tables for SPF are created. So at this point, uh, we're going to start the model, right? Uh, first of all, OSPF just distinguished four times, four types of networks. The first type of network is called broadcast. Uh, this is a multi-access uh, network, and typical example is Ethernet network, right? Second uh, model, uh, second type, type of network would be just the point-to-point, -point, right? Uh, this is made of serial links, point-to-point -point serial links, uh, uh, running PPP or HDLC. Oops, sorry. Right. Third um, OSPF uh, network will be the non-broadcast multi-access. This is a multi-access network, but non-broadcast. And uh, this is uh, run at uh, in in the frame rate or ATN clouds with a full mesh topology. And the fourth kind of network is a point-to-multipoint, which is, uh, is run in, in frame relays in, or ATM clouds, running a hub and spoke topology. Right. So. Having in, into account these four types of uh, networks, we just um, associate a type ID for to any uh, to each of them, right? Broadcast the zero, uh, point to point the one, non broadcast multi access two, point to multi point number three, and then we created two variables. Uh, the first variable is called the uh, uh, MT, standing for network type, meaning that this is the type ID we just associated uh, and applying the modulo. To uh, operation, we get that the results are 0, 1, 0, 1, meaning that when the value is zero, the, the, the network is multi-access, right? And when the value is one, it's non multi-access. And then we just create another uh, val a variable called TT value, standing for time in uh, uh, timing type, uh, and the operation is the type ID 
uh, the integral division by two, right? And so getting that the two first networks are the value zero and the two uh, last uh, networks has the value one. That means that the hello and, and the timers are different depending on uh, if the TT value is zero or uh, one. The, mm, for broadcast networks and point to point networks, the hello time values are 10 seconds and the dead times are four times uh, the, that value. And for the other two types of networks, the hello timer is 30 seconds, right? So um, with this um, kind of operation, with this kind of variables, we are just able just to adjust each kind of network to its uh, timers, timer values and to distinguish between multi-access uh, uh, networks or non-multi-access networks. Then, uh, another important thing for OSPF is uh, the distinction between neighbors and adjacents, right? Uh, a neighborhood uh, relationship uh, means that two OSPF routers do exchange hello packets, but they do not exchange LSA packets, right? In order to exchange LSA packets, two mm, neighboring routers uh, must be uh, adjacent as well, right? And to be adjacent, they must be either uh, a non-multi-access uh, or if uh, we are into a multi-access case, the LSA packets are, all, are, uh, are only exchanged if one of the two routers are DR or BDR, meaning designated router or, or, or backup designated router, right? So we have to model this. And in order to model this, we have created this, uh, this table, right? So a DR or BDR, the, the, the role of, the, of those, uh, of those uh, routers are, is just, just collecting all ALCs, right? Also, the DR and the BDR are both collecting the, uh, the LSAs, but then only the DR is just retransmitting the uh, LSAs to all of the, uh, of, of the neighbors, right? So the paper of the BDR is just uh, being just a backup solution in case the DR is gone, so, right? So we just need a mathematical expression just in order to put this into a, um, a, a shorter form. So in order to do this, um, we just uh, distinguish between network type zero or one, right? If network part, uh, type is zero, we have uh, we just associated uh, different values to the different type of um, routers. Mean the DR is three, the backup DR two, all the other uh, DR other would be one, and just for point to point links is zero, right? So the mathematical expression we just created is just this one, right? Meaning the in uh, integral division by five that of x plus two y plus nt, meaning that uh, the this uh, value just carries zero or one is just a binary value, uh, meaning the x the sending uh, router and y the uh, receiving router. So, if for example uh, the dr uh, we said it was three, right? So, just putting a three here, it doesn't uh, matter if we take our uh, dr other over here because. 3 plus 2 uh, divided by 5 is going to be 1, right? So <coughs> with this pressure, we just make sure that the DR just receives and sends the uh, LSAs. But if we are talking about the, B, the BDR, the BDR only receives but does not send, right? That's the, the point of this expression. Then about the timers. Uh, we, uh, OSPA defines four different kind of timers. We define, or uh, OSPA defines the hello timers at the waiting time to send a hello packet to a neighbor, right? The dead timer will be the waiting time to receive a hello packet from a neighbor before considering it's down. Uh, then the refresh LSA timers will be the waiting time to resend all the LSAs to the neighbors. The default timer is, uh, the default the value of that timer is 30 minutes. And the max HLS timer uh, is the waiting time to receive all the LSAs before considering the neighbor down, right? And the the, max, the 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 value is 60 minutes. Okay, uh, the maximum value for this timer here we have it, right? The maximum value for a hello timer, it, uh, I will say that it depends uh, because the TC value could be zero or one, right? For um, broadcast and uh, serial, uh, the 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 value was 10 seconds, but you remember. In uh, non-broadcast and point to multipoint, we were talking about uh, 30 seconds, right? So the proper expression would be like this, right? 10 plus 20 TT, the dead timer four times, the LSA, the LSA, the refresh LSA 
will be uh, 30 minutes, let's say um, 1,800 seconds, and the max age would be 3,600 seconds. So this is the synchronous OSPF uh, um, package, right? OSPF have synchronous um, actions and asynchronous actions, right? So talking about uh, focusing on the uh, synchronous actions, so when a, a router just run an OSPF, when the timer ticks, in all interfaces, we just uh, wait uh, when, the, uh, when the hello value for that interface is zero, and we just send the packet one. With, if you remember, packet one was hello. So we send a hello, and we reset the hello timer to the maximum value, right? Otherwise, if the dead timer is still big, bigger than zero, so the, the, the neighbor is uh, still up, then wait to receive the hello packet, reset the uh, maximum value of the uh, dead timer, or otherwise kill the neighbor relationship with the neighbor, right? Or if the refresh timer is zero, just if the KIG value is one, meaning uh, you remember that uh, we are able to exchange uh, LSA with the, with the neighbors, so send an LSU to the neighbor, reset the maximum uh, uh, timer, the, the, the timer uh, for refresh to the maximum value, or otherwise, if the max H, if the max H uh, timer is bigger than zero, if this uh, interface is able to exchange LSA um, values, receive this LSU packet, put the, uh, the, <coughs> the, the timer to the maximum value, refresh its LSA database, meaning that compare the values you just, you just received with the values you already have into your database. If they are better or more up to date, then uh, change it. And otherwise, remove it from the, uh, the date state, uh, link state database. Also, let's go for the asynchronous part. The asynchronous part meaning that at any time, a new uh, network, may, uh, a new LSA may come, may come or uh, uh, some LSA might, be, uh, might, might change the, their values. So if, uh, if this uh, KIJ uh, is one, just send the uh, database description, meaning the, the LSA header, and wait for, to receive the LSA header from the other interface. On the other side, the same, receive, send it, and if this is better, so update this one, just send an LSA request, receive the LSA LSU, and send the ACK. And otherwise, if you receive an LSA request, send it to the other side and wait for the ACK. And just the model will be just the synchronous part plus the synchronous part if it is bigger than zero, otherwise in it. Right, this is the model for the uh, one, for the two, and also just uh, apply an encapsulation uh, operator, meaning that for uh, this, uh, um, this uh, operator, encapsulation operator, what, what does is just uh, transform the sending and reading uh, actions into communications. So at the end of the day, after, after applying all of this, we have the synchronous part, meaning exchanging uh, hello packets and um, update packets, or otherwise updating when the, uh, in a synchronous way. Verification uh, as ACPs and abstract algebra prove a contradiction. Uh, so we are just exchanging, uh, we, we have uh, just two types of uh, packets just type one, just sending hellos, and just type two, uh, two to five, just uh, exchanging LSAs. So, just uh, as we just um, premises at least one path among, uh, uh, among uh, any two given routers, is uh, this is done due to the exchange of type 1 packets, and this is thanks to the neighbor uh, uh, relationships. And if a, path go, if a path goes down, a random path gets in, and this is due to the exchange of uh, uh, types 2, 3, 4, 5, and thanks to the adjacency relationships. So at the end of the day, in conclusions, uh, we've been working on a mathematical model of the OSPF routing protocol, and two kinds of relationships have been modeled, uh, neighbor relationships and adjacency relationships. Uh, synchronous and asynchronous counterparts have been expressed, and the model obtained matches the expected behavior of the OSPF uh, standard. So, uh, this is it, and thank you very much for.
Okay, is there any question from the audience? No? Okay, I have uh, two of my own, just curiosities because <laughs> I have to confess I got lost three minutes ago. <laughs> it was too much equations. That's okay. Uh, well, I haven't seen any, how to say, I haven't seen any figure at the end, but maybe because I'm not familiar with this topic. But I think I expected to see some performance if this is an algebraic uh, modeling of the requesting time or is there any way to to put it in graphically so you can analyze visually the performance well what we thought is just to, to make um what the, what, what, uh, the OSPF uh, standard does mm -hmm. put it just in mathematical language yeah, yeah, yeah. that I was the, that was the quite idea. A question. it's very interesting and I, I, I understand it and, and I understand the interest mm -hmm. but it would be nice for those not familiar for this to see at the end a figure just uh, it would uh, be a good point you watching know, it's the it's no, 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 it's okay it's it's a, a and the other thing is just something that confuses me maybe also the same thing I'm not familiar with this uh, um, this uh, standards mm -hmm. but the time uh, the, the, the time for hello the time for is it too long 10 seconds yes. is it, is it the, this is a standard time yes the standard time is uh, 10 seconds from uh, from the uh, uh, to send hellos uh, from uh, uh, one neighbor send a hello and uh -huh. it was 10 seconds to send an, uh, the, no. an, another hello yeah, yeah, it yeah, is yeah. like this is what, yeah. what the standard says and it's also for IPv4 and IPv6 it's oh, yeah, yeah. The same. I, I thought it was much shorter it should uh, be much shorter but uh, yeah, 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 I, yeah. I don't know why but it, 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 these are the, okay, okay. the points and also for non-broadcast multi f or friend relay mm -hmm. or ATM is just 30 seconds yeah, it's even, even, it's worse. Even, even worse yes but it's uh, and it can get up to 120 for the, the other messages yes which is uh, well, they, are, they are waiting if an able just goes down it waits for two minutes 120 yeah, yeah, yeah. seconds just to declare the neighbor down yeah, it's a bit yeah. too much maybe yeah. But okay, any other question? Yes? Yeah, sure. so, so basically you have shown a mathematical proof or, or algebraic proof that OSPF protocol uh, co converts. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, we have one, uh, well that, that, would, that would make the verification, the final hmm. verification. But the thing is um, we, we were just running out of time and uh, I just made a very, very quick verification. Uh -huh. So we just said, okay, we have if a neighbor goes down, okay, we have the LXA exchange. Uh, we need at least one path to, to get to, to, to one neighbor. Mm, this is uh, down with the uh, hello exchange. And we just stopped at that way. Maybe that would be nice just to prove it, uh, to make a, a more formal proof for this. And we'll leave it for our okay. next paper next time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you all for your presence. We have finished with this uh, session. We have had uh, say six very interesting presentations. And, and now it is time for lunch. I guess lunch is in the same place as yesterday. So I will invite you, all of you, to get to the restaurant for lunch. Okay, thank you.